Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So the question, how come it's not fully implemented in any Islamic country? Uh, I think that's a uh, answer that has multiple multiple aspects to it. Number one, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma biinfusim that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of themselves. Um, obviously, in order to fully implement the Sharia on a state level, there has to be a khilafa because khilafa represents perfect balance and perfect justice in that regard. So, as I said. It's an oxymoron to say a king who implements sharia because that king would not be questioned in any way. And in Islam, at least on a state level, you have a khalifa and you have the shura and you have people holding the khalifa accountable um, in regards to his decisions. Um, and so I think that the first thing is that number one, obviously, because we don't have a khilafa, and that's the easy answer, of course, uh, to the question why sharia is not fully implemented. Um, Number two, what you see happening in, in, in many of these states and, and in many of these countries is, you, is obviously like any country, once the ummah becomes fragmented, like any country, every country pursues its own interests. Every state pursues its own interests. So for example, in many of the states that, uh, that, claim, to, that claim to implement sharia, you will have institutionalized racism. Okay, so in some of these countries that, came, that implement certain aspects of hudud, if a native of that country was to hit you with his car while you're parked on the side of the road, you know, you're going to be the one who's at fault. Uh, or for example, if, the, you know, if someone from the royal family is caught, again, this is why a monarch cannot properly implement sharia. If someone from the royal family is caught doing a crime with evidence that is as clear as night and day, then that person will not be prosecuted. However, if someone who's poor on the street um, is even accused of committing that very same crime, then the punishment will be carried out on that person in the harshest uh, way whatsoever. Okay, so from the aspect of hudud and these types of things, obviously now that the ummah is fragmented into states and countries and nations, every country acts in its own interest. Um, the second thing that's important to understand is that when people... Uh, sometimes you have people that are demanding some form of Islam, and this is a good thing that we see in the Muslim world today. For the most part, the masses are demanding some form of Islam in their government, some form of Islam to rule them in these Muslim majority countries, and that's coming along with alongside calls of justice. And Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We all agree Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a visionary leader. By the wahi, by the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was given insights into what works. And one of the things that don't work was tribalism. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called for the shahada to be the Islamic bond between human beings. And so people broke out of their tribes and formed an Islamic ummah, even though it was very difficult. And you have to think about that. Like think about giving up your tribe, which was your source of protection, your source of wealth, to give that up. Like today it would be like giving up your passport if you lived in Canada or one of these other rich countries. And that's essentially what the Sahaba did. They burnt their passports to, become, to form the, uh, the, the Ummah, the, 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 the Hizb under Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was working to uh, establish the Islamic State, to work with him and to follow him. Now Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, was against the idea of tribalism in Mecca. But it was only until when he got to Medina that he took those ideas and actually made them into a concrete vision. So think about how when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed how the Ansar and the Muhajirin had to be actually brothers, that where they would inherit from each other, just like a, a brother would inherit from a blood brother today. Now, of course, that was, that was uh, abrogated later. But the point is that Islam didn't leave the idea that, that we were to abolish tribalism and just left it as, as a fanciful idea. Rather, there was implementation. And so that's why it's important to look at the constitution that Hizb al-Tahrir has put together. Because it's not just fanciful ideas about Islam, which is supposed to be just kind of discussed in an ivory tower setting, but rather it's meant to be implemented. The justice and mercy of Islam came through its implementation, a just taxation system, a just economic system, a just ruling system. All this justice has to be done in a court. So Islam is meant to be implemented. And so brothers and sisters, do check out the constitution of Hizb al-Tahrir where we go into a lot of details. A lot, one for example, one problem right now is inflation. How will, will, how will the Khilafah fight inflation? Well, we won't have a fiat currency. We won't just print currency because that's haram. We have to have a medium of exchange that is gold and silver. You want to know the evidences? Check out the, the Constitution. Download it. Read it. Ask us questions. This is the purpose. Brothers and sisters, we know that the victory is coming. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us in a sahih hadith in Ahmad that there'll be a khilafa man hajanabuwa. But the question is, what did you and I do to, do to make it happen, right? What did we do to partake in this certain victory? Isn't that strange that we as an ummah in this political activism, we have a guaranteed hadith that we will be victorious. So brothers and sisters, what we have to do is we have to educate those ourselves and those around us about the, the, the solutions of Islam. So download this constitution, ask us questions, and inshallah, work with Hizb al-Tahrir to reestablish the Islamic way of life through the reestablishment of Khilaf in the Muslim lands. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.